Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're having a look at this CB Master 3600 120 channel AM FM SSB CB radio. Now I believe these were found in a container somewhere many years ago, new old stock. So let's have a look at this. Now I believe this, this one is new old stock. So let's see how time has treated it. See whether it needs any extra work doing to it. So opening the box as you would expect, everything is there. So obviously the box has already been opened. So we have a nice bracket. Never been used. Here we have the microphone. CB master on it. I've noticed that, that this microphone cable has got a little bit gooey. So I'm going to have to try and clean that off. I think it's just what happens to plastic over age. It's a little bit sticky. Maybe it's because it's been in that bag for a long time. We have a power lead with a warning on it. Do not push transmit button. A bit, that's kind of the... What you'd do with a radio is push the transmit button, but yeah, there's obviously warnings. A little accessory bag, very nice. So let's have a look at the radio itself. So we have instruction manual. Still intact with its, its frequencies. With your transceiver has been modified to operate on the frequencies shown. Excellent. So, box is in good condition. So, let's have a look at the radio. So, yeah, case is in absolutely excellent condition. And there's the front, absolutely unmarked. There's a little bit of surface, something going on there. Back is very nice. And something on the sides as well but if this has been stored if this has been stored somewhere for many many years in a container or whatever it was then yeah I believe it was with those Westland 707s as well so powering up it does come on that was a good sign we'll plug the microphone in we have some sound it's got 120 channels on this, so this should be crystal controlled. Let's see if we can hear anything. The conditions have been up and down the last few days. One day it can be absolutely heaving, and the next day it can be absolutely dead. So we are transmitting. So let's have a look inside. And immediately it smells old. So there's something going on on the back of the speaker there. Don't know why it chose that part of the speaker, but yeah. So date code on the PLL 8104. So is that an indication of when this radio was made and then stored away? So as to be expected. Completely unmodified, totally factory standard. Now we all know the Cybernet 121s are terrible when they come out of the factory. So let's just do a little bit of modern maintenance to it, which involves obviously the biasing of the finals and the pre-drive and the um, audio clipper modification, which is our 150 up there. So there's one of our biasing resistors out. There's the other biasing resistor and our audio clipper. So that one needs to be a 5.6k. So that's going to go in there. Like so. So we'll get that soldered 
into place. The other two resistors we're going to replace. Move this one to a 15 ohm. Adds a little bit more um, range on that pot. And a 33 ohm to bring the pre-drive to round about 0.7 because these 121 boards were never biased correctly when they come out of the factory so we'll get those nicely soldered into place Sorry about the camera focus, it was focusing on my hand more than the job. Fold the leg of the transistor back down again, there we go. And we'll do the R150. So we'll solder that in. And I'm not going to do anything silly to this radio. So there's our bias, so 0.7 of a volt on the base on the 69, round about, that'll do. So we're going to check some frequencies, so 10695, I've adjusted to get that on. And the 10692, just needs a little bit of adjustment to get that right. And I forgot to do the 1040, or 10240, so we'll bring that in. Close enough. Just check the 692 and the 695, make sure they're not moved, they haven't. Do the LSB offset. 21035, onto, onto the test point. Now the SSB waveform is a little bit strange. And I found out later on that this is causing issues with the SSB audio. So this is going to have to get looked at a little bit more. So let's have a look at the frequencies. So there's our low band. There's our mid band. And we should have high band somewhere. There's our mid band now. And where's high band? There's high band. So yeah, we're all pretty close. Nice four watts. We're near enough five now. I've not adjusted any of the output stage. So we're just doing a receiver test. It's around about hundred minus hundred and ten. We should start seeing the synod increasing, which it is doing. So, around about 110. Yep, very nice. Nice and sensitive. So we'll just change the frequency, just make sure it's spread out enough. So we're onto high band there. Look, it's onto high band. Brilliant. Pop it onto low band. And yep, yeah, receiver's nicely spread. So that's low, mid and high. And as you can see, the front of this radio is in absolutely beautiful condition. That's one of my locals there, blowing my blowing my needle to the other side. Now I wasn't going to change the VCO, but I spoke to the local there and he said it was absolutely terrible. So I changed the VCO and it improved it a little bit. But we need to work on this a little bit more. But that can be for a future video. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the look at this new old stock radio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, buy me a coffee, join Patreon, join the Facebook group. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.